Chapter 16 The Bathroom It would not be easy to find a statement on hygiene more wrong, or at least more incomplete, than this one by the celebrated architectural critic Lewis Mumford in his classic work The City in History, published in 1961. For thousands of years, city dwellers put up with defective, often quite vile, sanitary arrangements, wallowing in rubbish and filth they certainly had the power to remove, for the occasional task of removal could hardly have been more loathsome than walking and breathing in the constant presence of such ordure. If one had any sufficient explanation of this indifference to dirt and odor that are repulsive to many animals, even pigs, who take pains to keep themselves and their lairs clean, one might also have a clue to the slow and fitful nature of technological improvement itself in the five millennia that followed the birth of the city. In fact, as we have already heard with Scarra Bray in Orkney, people have been dealing with dirt, rubbish, and wastes, often surprisingly effectively, for a very long time, and Scarra Bray is by no means unique. A home of 4,500 years ago from the Indus Valley, at a place called Mahenjo Dero, had a nifty system of rubbish chutes to get waste out of the living area and into a midden. David, don't know the next time from Shinola. Everything that glitter ain't fish scale. Let me think, don't let a faint get his smell. A shot of Jack out of back, it's not an axe stack. Forgot about the cackalack, holler back, clack, clack, blocker. Villainy, feel him in your heart, chocolate chart, top of start, shit stopper, be a smart shopper. Shot a cop day around the way, bout the stable, who to know is too molded, wonder where the shooter go. About to jet, get him, not a bet, dead him. Let him spit the venom, said him, got a lot of shit with him, let the rhythm hit him. Stronger in the other voice, we makes the joints that make them spread them butter moist, man, please. Stage made of panties, from the age of baby hoochies on to the grannies, ban me the dough rake. Daddy, the flow make her fatty shake. Patty cake, patty cake, for fake. Ancient Babylon had drains and a sewage system. The Minoans had running water, bathtubs, and other civilizing comforts well over 3,500 years ago. In short, cleanliness and generally looking after one's body have been important to a lot of cultures for so long that it is hard to know where to begin. The ancient Greeks were devoted bathers. They loved to get naked, gymnasium means the naked place, and work up a healthful sweat, and it was their habit to conclude their daily workouts with a communal bath. But these were primarily hygienic plunges. For them, bathing was a brisk business, something to be got over quickly. Really serious bathing, languorous bathing, starts with Rome. Nobody has ever bathed with as much devotion and precision as the Romans did. The Romans loved water altogether. One house at Pompeii had thirty taps, and their network of aqueducts provided their principal cities with a superabundance of fresh water. The delivery rate to Rome worked out at an intense... We're kind of eliminated. I always have that little like, fight in my mind. I don't want to be too commercial, you know? ...lavish 300 gallons per head per day, seven or eight times more than the average Roman needs today. To Romans, the baths were more than just a place to get clean. They were a daily refuge, a pastime, a way of life. Roman baths had libraries, shops, exercise rooms, barbers, beauticians, tennis courts, snack bars, and brothels. People from all classes of society used them. It was common, when meeting a man, to ask where he bathed, writes Catherine Aschenberg in her sparkling history of cleanliness, The Dirt on Clean. 